Hello, of course review of iBuzzo DX170 from me is delayed uh, by a noticeable amount of time. That was because uh, the delivery of official batch to players to Ukraine. But now I finally get uh, this player to review, to try and tell you about it. And in the past, of course, iBuzzo proved that they can create really good players, like with models like DX150, DX200 and... Uh, DX220, they created really good models in terms of uh, sound and usability. But then Ibasu shifted towards, you know, really great design, like DX300, DX320, especially new limited version, DX240 and DX160, they were pretty interesting. But uh, DX170 looks even better, or at least on the level. Uh, on the same level as previous iBus releases. It's uh, pretty affordable, costs uh, $450. Maybe because of that, here used ROG chip uh, 3566 uh, uh, chipset, uh, 2GB of RAM and 32GB of onboard flash memory. And uh, as digital to analog converters, here used uh, CS43131. And uh, as usual, iBus are good in amplification, so for the 4.4 mm balanced out, uh, um, one will get 6.4 volts RMS, and for the 3.5, 3.2 volts RMS, so pretty good amplification. Of course, here we have uh, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, uh, big 5 inch screen with uh, full HD resolution, so in all aspects it looks pretty promising. So. Let's have a closer look what we've got in this box. So box is pretty humble, just interesting. Uh, in terms of materials, it's great. Uh, and uh, color palette is pretty exciting, like this mustard yellow. So as usual, on top some documents. Then we dig deeper. Here is screen protector that was applied on the screen. And let me pull out this uh, internal cover. So, also you get two protective films. Unfortunately, they are not glued to the screen. And I spoiled both trying to glue them, but then I just psyched up and throw them to the trash can. And you get silicone case uh, and uh, USB Type-C charging cable, which is uh, pretty okay for the budget segment. Of course, uh, everyone would like to see something more sufficient, like leather case, but taking price into account, uh, we need uh, to understand that uh, they try to save some costs. In terms of design, you know, I am trying to find good uh, good word to describe it, uh, like magnificent, excellent, exquisite, I really like it. First of all, you can see, uh, probably see that it's compact. Almost all front panel occupied with the screen, bevels are really small, bezels, and uh, that means that it's just 5 inch in diagonal, like 5 inch 0.2 or something like that. It's uh, compact and fitting well into the pocket. And it's uh, pretty slim. Of course, here it looks even slimmer because of these uh, rounded edges. But even if we look from the top side, where it has maximum uh, width, it's still really pocketable, it's lightweight, it's uh, holding in hand really well, and thanks to the all-rounded edges, it fits nicely into the pocket. There were some complaints in the past uh, f about the volume uh, wheel that it was uh, too uh, uh, extruding from the case of the player and then um, some people didn't like it. Actually, new one, you can see it really sits flush and the main complaints here now is that it's not that convenient to turn, but actually for me I see zero problems in turning it. I really like that, that uh, sense of rotation really good uh, uh, texture here, so it's all done really well. So let's look at sides. Here we've got slot for micro SD cards. 
One issue is that slot is pretty wide and there is a noticeable gap above the microSD card. I hope there is some screen to protect from the dust. USB Type-C for charging on top and of course to access files, to use it as digital tonal converter, to use external digital tonal converter, all things we know. Speaking about the charging, it supports uh, Quick Charge 3.0 if I remember right and the uh, full charge of battery should work up to 11 hours but in practi practice I've got up to 10 hours from single-ended output and uh, 7 to 8 hours from balanced depending on the load actually. Here we've got three buttons for playback control. I'd like uh, to have a bit more tactile press, but still after some usage you uh, start in distinguishing them easily. And they are pretty convenient with clicks defined, but I still like to it be a bit harder. Nice uh, volume control with good rotation, nice clicks and reg registration of that clicks. And on the bottom there are two, uh, two outputs, Pentacon for the balanced out and 3.5 mm that works as headphones out, line out and even as pediv. And fun thing, usually in the past we, we had uh, 3.5 mm with metal ring and all other outputs without, but now situation changed and we're getting Pentacon with metal ring. Not like it uh, changes uh, anything in practice, but uh, just different approach, so everyone shifted uh, main attention towards the balanced outs. But you know, the part I liked most of all about this player is the back panel. It's like, it's superb. They've used it before, but to, uh, this I, finally I've got blue version of the X170 and it looks absolutely astonishing, reminding some kind of pearl and uh, in my opinion that uh, back panel is worth uh, any flagship player nowadays, at least to my taste. So really great in terms of outlook, but also it's great in terms of touch. It's so smooth that it's, I just uh, keep uh, touching it always. Of course, it requires uh, additional attention, this back panel, because it's fragile, but uh, a protective case will help you. And the front panel is uh, presenting almost each to each screen. It's 5 uh, inches with full HD resolution, normal viewing angles, not super, but uh, kind of okay for usage. It's not super bright, but uh, it will be enough brightness to use it uh, under the direct sun sunlight. Maybe you have to cover it with your hand a little bit. You can see colors are bright and vivid. It reacts well to swipes. That's probably what we can definitely expect. So in terms of design, as I've said, I'm over impressed. In terms of firmware, it's Android 11 with some additions, so basically the option we see with many other players. Uh, from out of the box there were no Google Play Store, but uh, solving this task is really easy. You go to the APK Pure, it's alternative uh, application uh, shop, and you just uh, select the Play Store, install it, and now you have Google Play Store, so it's not a problem here. Traditionally, there are some additions in the settings. Uh, of course, uh, main one is audio. And in display, you can select buttons and stuff. So you can here select volume, select gain, the roll of 3.5 mm output, select one of digital filters and volume limitation. And volume control knob, you can select is it working uh, uh, when screen is locked. Basically, you know, it's, that's it. Also some additional options here at the top uh, drawer like gain, digital filter and 3.5 mm out selector, so basically that's it. Mango player is a stock default player, you can of course install whatever you like, but uh, Mango player offers you two widgets with controls of audio settings and uh, with pretty big widget with now playing screen and uh, buttons. And uh, inside it's still the traditional well-known Mango player we've seen before many times. So if we press here, we go to the media library. I'm not hitting this button. And here you can see like 
by artist, artist albums and uh, other groupings that we used here. And you can select what uh, exact groupings you need and the uh, sorting you'd like to see here. And then you can browse, add, add, delete, so all that things we know. Or you can look uh, by files, internal storage and external one. And now playing screen is traditional and well known and uh, go to settings. And here you can select game plus playback, select two levels of gain, play mode, uh, equalizer, left right balance, select digital filter, scan media library and bit of even more advanced uh, options here. But uh, the interesting part here is equalizer because they have graphic equalizer and parametric and it's pretty convenient in terms of settings you can select one you can select uh, frequency you can uh, choose a type of uh, filter and uh, apply it and use whatever you'd like works pretty good without much uh, distortion in sound so good alternative if you want to change sound but of course it applies only to the internal uh, player not to the uh, system level and in terms of overall speed you know it's not uh, awfully lagging but uh, i noticed that it's a bit slower than like uh, snapdragon 660 because uh, this rock chip is some some bit better than uh, snapdragon 430 but uh, not by much and uh, that Snapdragon is pretty outdated for the modern versions of Android and player. So it's not super fast, but in general I didn't notice a huge lag too. But uh, main, maybe it's because I don't use here some fancy things like file managers, downloaders. I just use it to play music and also tried Apple Music. Not super fast, but uh, pretty good. But still keep in mind that uh, if you need super high resp uh, responsiveness probably you need to test it before buying but in general i didn't face big issues here and of course about the sound you know i didn't have any worries about this part because like for their lineup for many years i also delivered really consistent tuning uh, executed on a really good level and uh, dx170 didn't uh, become haven't become an exception because like it's a still familiar signature uh, detailed na almost natural technical with uh, slightly forward representation slightly boosted emotions and uh, macro dynamics not by much just to make things a bit spicy and it's like you know opposite direction compared to players that tries to be warmer, more weightier, more musical. So Ibasu really stands out from the rest of the players, making uh, choice uh, really simpler. But more on that, uh, let's uh, uh, talk at the end of this video about the comp in the comparisons part. So let's go step by step. I'll use uh, Unique Melody Mast Mark II for illustration just to be here but of course I tried it with many other models and uh, low frequencies they are going into maximum depth they are well controlled uh, because of good amplification they are staying natural because they are not trying to add some weight or not trying to uh, add some punch like some other players does just what is present in the record it will try to play and at the same time it has a bit more focus on the small nuances in the low frequencies which makes them a bit more analytical so it's a bit uh, other taste of uh, low frequencies you're focusing more on details not on punch or uh, actually weight but of course you can get more weight just select some bass heavy earphones and there won't be any problems but uh, main of course to get the most of the slow frequencies you need to enjoy that nuances and details preferably with some uh, not maybe acoustical but like realistic instruments that have uh, really saturated sound not some sampled bass but of course uh, in modern music uh, uh, producers and musicians often use really high quality samples so you know this division between sampled and 
real instruments became smaller. And actually, sometimes realistic instruments is more about some slight imperfections, because sample is always perfect. And the acoustic instrument sounds different, each note slightly differs. Not by much, of course, but uh, I hope you understand what I am trying to say. Each performance will be different and so on. And I selected a uh, few examples. First one is, like always, Musica Nuda, Boca di Rosa. Uh, I googled the lyric lyrics of this song and actually it's uh, surprisingly deep. And it's uh, some uh, not uh, recent song, so Music Anuta here performs the cover version. I'm not really familiar with uh, Italian music, uh, but uh, it was interesting experience. But what makes this track interesting in this case is that the speed of this track. So uh, Petra Magoni thinks on the maximum speed, uh, like you know, I know, you know, she's overcoming uh, fast rappers here. And uh, Ferruccio Spinetti just uses bow to play his bass, not uh, fingers like he usually does, not slapping, but bow. And it's, a, you know, a bit different representation of uh, double bass. We used with music Anuda and with other mu musicians who play double bass, we used two finger uh, playing, like it's more saturated, more fat and thick uh, music. But here with bow you getting really fast notes extraction, but at the same time it's still double bass, it's not resonating as rich as it uh, used to be with fingers, but at the same time you getting that sense of uh, wood and strings here thanks to this player and it's uh, 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 not accent but good representation of small nuances and details. And the second example actually from that series, it's Snarky Puppy, Grown Folks, uh, and I need probably to buy a few their albums, few more their albums to wider my collection, because they are always a great example, and this track is not exception. Lot of uh, interesting bass uh, and uh, nicely recorded, uh, and actually represented also really well with good um, amount of nuances and details. Mid frequencies have a really good resolution, and if you like slight focus on the micro contrast, this player does that. It's not going far into the micro contrast because it will it will sound really thin and analytical. And uh, I bass released DX120 some time ago with such tuning, and uh, not uh, many people like it. The, there are community, of, there is community of fans, but like it's not huge, so. <laughs> like everyone likes to get the maximum detailization, but actually not everyone uh, understand what it gives. So resolution is good, uh, even slightly higher than traditional in this segment, but not too analytical, not too fatiguing, not too critical for the quality of records. But anyway, quality of records is pretty important for this player, so it's highly more critical than others. And you'll get the nuances, you'll get the details, you'll get great sense of realism for vocal and for instruments, and uh, uh, you also get a bit boosted emotions, a bit boosted forwardness. For example, distorted guitar sounds a bit uh, sharper, and so on. But everything also really depends on the quality of record here, because it's not trying to add some weight, for example. Um, so if uh, record is bad in terms of uh, body for instruments or for vocal, it won't try to correct that. And the imaginary stage is really good, spacious, both in width and in depth, it's really big, but sometimes distance between instruments are a bit bigger than it should be, and in some cases uh, record sounds like more sparse than it should be, it losing a bit of intimacy, but if you like, like tons of air and big 3D effect uh, in the affordable segment, it's one of the best options. And first example for the mid frequencies actually Metallica's Master of Puppets. Like, uh, as I've said, distorted guitar sounds a bit sharper, which really benefits for this track. 
and uh, it sounds uh, kind of engaging and a bit forward so like a bit shifting towards live live performance of course uh, i'm kidding it's not the real effect here but good amount of aggression and nice uh, representation of the voice uh, baseline and other stuff here and another classics it's uh, don't cry slow ballad with sweet vocal like to, like classics of the classics and uh, this player also delivers it nicely because it boosted um, boosts emotions a little bit and that's just what this track actually it doesn't need that but uh, you're getting a bit of uh, spice here and it sounds more engaging and treble it has a good extension not maximum like somewhere in between average and maximum and uh, nice amount of uh, overtone saturation good attacks and decays layering is kind of uh, basic a bit better than basic but of course not the level of dx240 or dx300 for example but anyway it saturates music with uh, basic uh, amount of overtones actually better than basic average probably not maximum not basic so also like slightly above average and it gives a good sense of spaciousness and uh, airness and uh, of course keep in mind it's not trying to hide treble absolutely and uh, it's not trying to make it softer but at the same time it's not making it over energetic that slight focus on the resolution actually, actually makes treble a bit uh, spicy but uh, not too bright or too analytical and two examples uh, as usual first one is innuendo actually it starts with that uh, interesting drums and uh, in intro everyone heard this track and it has the drums with some kind of brushes that goes to the treble area and actually it represents them really well and more complex track in terms of quality of records it's john McEwen, excitable boy from rock ray imagined and uh, uh, there is some instrument at the beginning i'd assume that it's a banjo but i am not sure here because i'm not that familiar with banjo and uh, it goes pretty high to the treble area and uh, of course percussion so a lot of traditionally for the audiophilic records a lot of things goes to the treble area and resonate there it's lacking a bit of uh, actually layering to play it at the full potential but in general it gives a really pleasant uh, sense in terms of pairings uh, low background noise so uh, good performance with uh, sensitive in-ear monitors and uh, from like on the other side a good performance with uh, sensitive or medium sensitive full-size headphones not like some tough to drive planars of course uh, but anyway models with reasonable sensitivity like the dynamic drivers uh, that uh, i reviewed recently pretty lot of uh, uh, lot of models and uh, sometimes not uh, tough to drive planar magnetic headphones like popular now on the market will be good uh, load for it and of course about the comparisons but uh, i will focus on the most recent models and of course i need to mention ibasu dx 160 compared to 160 it's a noticeable step forward not huge but noticeable it's a bit less colored so sound more realistic more balanced more natural so it's a good step forward in terms of uh, like in that direction where all the market goes like more natural more natural more balanced sound signature but still of course it's clearly audible that uh, this is a successor of dx160 and uh, what we've got also here recent uh, uh, b r63 it's a bit more expensive it's more natural with a bit more focus on the micro contrast but uh, like it's a, even a bit more refining in small nuances and details if you'd like that uh, fio m11s it's kind of a bit opposite <laughs> also natural but with more added weight and less forward representation so 
a bit less highlighting that emotions and aggressive part, but also with good dynamics, so both are trying to boost macro dynamics. And Shanling M3 Ultra, it's like another uh, player on its own, more weightier, more like sometime, someone calls it musical, with more weight uh, on lows and mids, with uh, less forwardness, more relaxed and uh, calm sound signature. In general, you know, it's a really good player from all perspectives, except of not super fast interface, but in this uh, price tier we get a lot of uh, rock chips and Snapdragon, so it's not a big issue. And in terms of music, of course, it's a really good offer if you like exactly the same signature. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention, and of course, have a nice day.